Hi, welcome to my channel, A Girl, A Game, and A Goal. My name is Didi. I'm the girl of the channel, and the game we'll get to in a minute, but I want to talk about the goal, which for this series, which I'm calling Play With Me From Afar, is remote gaming. Because right now in the time of COVID, we are not able to get out there in the world. We're not able to go to the local Panera and have a game night, or even have people over and just like hang out and chill and play a bunch of games. So how do we get our gaming fix on? Well, there are a lot of games out there that lend themselves perfectly to remote gaming. And so I'm gonna share a bunch of games through this series, which I think are perfect. And I'm gonna show you the basics of the game and I'll show you some of the ideas behind how to play them remotely. And then if you can get a bunch of friends together and you can get on Zoom or Skype or maybe Google Meets, you can play. And if you're really adventurous, you might even try your hand at streaming on a platform such as Twitch or on like YouTube Live so that you can even have a bigger community and you can reach a lot more gamers out there that are stuck at home. And so uh, this series is going to do just that. It's going to inspire you to get out there and play some games remotely. So now let's take a look at the game. The game we have here is called Quix. Q-W-I-X-X. -X. And I have a version of the uh, score sheet and the dice that come with it. And this is actually more closely to what you would get in a score sheet of the game. Um, this has been blown up quite a bit because I do do the remote play and um, if I want to show it on the stream I want it bigger versus working on like something that's half the size so you can find these score sheets like I said boardgamegeek.com I'm gonna say that in every single video practically and this one is in, is very similar to the one that you get in the game the deluxe version has dry erase markers and dry erase boards the uh, basic version has paper pad so what I found was that they had this one and I like this one and this is the one that I have available in my Google Docs drive that I share out when I'm Twitch streaming to the different players so that you can go print your sheet and then come back to the game because it tells you exactly what's happening for each of the sections and then there's like a little turn order and game end indicator so you know when you stream or when you remote teach to someone you're gonna tell them how to play the game and so I'm gonna do that right now but they'll be able to use this one and see the different little reminders of what's happening in each, in each area now as far as a low resolution because some people don't want to spend a lot of ink or they don't have access to ink or whatever the case is you could um, I haven't found one yet. If I find one, I'll link it. I'll, I'll put it in my Google Drive. You could just indicate that this is the red, yellow, green, and blue rows. And then it pretty much stays the same. And just be conscientious of that. And again, we love our lamination. And we love our dry erase pens. So how is the game play? Well, you want to score, of course, the most points for the game. And there's a couple of different... Um, things that are going on here and the mechanics need to flow in a certain way. So what we're trying to do is trying to cr cross out numbers and we want to cross out the numbers that go from left to right. You'll notice that the red and the yellow are increasing in value from 2 to 12, all the possible throws of two dice, and the green and the blue are decreasing in value from 12 to 2. Okay, So there's a difference going on there. What we're doing is we're going to be rolling dice and crossing out the numbers that we create within each of the columns, depending on the color and what we're rolling and the choices that we make. At the end, when the game is triggered, the end of the game is triggered, depending upon how many things, how many numbers you've actually crossed out and used, you will get points. So if you are able to cross out six numbers, Throughout the course of the game, you will get 21 points. You will put that for the red. If you crossed out four numbers, you would get 10 points. Six numbers again, or seven numbers, would give you 28 points, and so forth, right? You will subtract any points when you are, are not able to mark a number, okay? And this basically is happening only when you're the active player. So yet again, we have this idea of an active player, and... It's not as um, 
difficult as it sounds because um, you will be Zooming or Skyping or chatting if you're doing it in a you know community-based situation like Twitch or YouTube Live. And so you're going to roll the dice, the, the person who owns the game, who decides to make the dice, and they'll be the active players for the first round. So what happens is that you take the four colored dies and you put them off to the side for a minute, and then you take these two die and you get the number 12, okay? Everyone is able to use the number 12, if you so choose. You do not have to. Now, what you notice is that it's white, so therefore it can go into any different color that you want. So what you'll do is you'll just cross out whatever you want. So let's say I use it for the green, and I cross out the 12 there. Now, everyone else is doing their thing through the chat and through the Zoom and Skype. You can ask each other, you know, what you do. You know, it's a little different when you're in person. You can kind of see each other's boards and strategize a little bit. If you're on a more close setting like Zoom and Skype, you could show each other your boards if you so choose it. But I've played this before and it really doesn't make that much of a difference. Okay, the next thing is that you, as the active player, has a second option, okay, which is to take one of the white die, in this case, they both have to be six, but make an, a secondary combination. So you could make an 11 that's red, you could make a 12 that's yellow, you could make a seven that's green, and you can make a nine that's blue. And just for argument's sake, if this had been a four, let's say, right, then you would make possibly a nine that's red, a ten that's yellow, a five that's blue, and a three and a four make a seven that's blue. So what's going to happen is that, you know, you'll have these on the screen. If they're big enough, everybody can see them. But, you know, being that you're the host of the game, you might want to just say the options. You probably will want to say the options for the person that is the active player next. So I'm going to go on the extreme and I'm just going to say that I'm going to do a seven because I want to show you an aspect of this. A seven that's green. Now that's not really the best option for me here. But if I were to do that, that means that I've selected the seven. Now, here's the other level of the component uh, complexity of the game. Since I didn't use these numbers, I can no longer use them. I cannot go back. You need to fill in your your rows column by column from left to right. That makes sense, right? And ultimately, you want to be able to get to the lock. But in order to do the lock, two things have to occur. You have to have at least five X's. And this number here needs to be crossed out. So if I were to have a seven, a six, a five, and then I cross out the two. Well, I can now cross out this and lock this, the green. What that means is that the green is no longer in play for anybody that comes out the game. And what happens is that once two of the colors are locked out, the game is over. So you're chatting with your people remotely and you are making sure you do that check-in as to has anybody finished a row, has anybody finished a color, what color gets locked and such. And you have to keep that in mind and, and keep, that, keep track of that. Now there's no like, oh, if four people, it's once the first one has done it. That's it. Call it a day. So you take out the green and you keep working to it. Now, the other way that ends the game is say, for example... I were to roll something that I could not use. So if I roll, and there's no way for me to use a seven anywhere on my board because this is wild. I don't have a setup that I could show you this, so you have to understand. If you have questions, you can always put them in the comments. So if I have a seven and I can't place it on any of the colors, right, and I can't do any kind of combination at all with anything that's going on, then it's called a mistro, and I would cross out one of the mistros. If I, as the active player, gets four of them, or any active player gets four of them, then the game is ended, right? And that game ends, and that's when you get a minus five here. 
So then you could add up your X's like I was talking before using these charts and then putting them for each color, taking away if you did the mistro, and then you get your total points right there, right? So that's the game. That's it. So you will roll the die for the active player. The active player will get to use the white as well as everybody else who's playing the game. And then you can, like I said, call out, okay, active player, Bobby, you get to use an 11 red, a 12 yellow, a 9 uh, blue, and a 7 that is green. Or you get to use a 6 that is red, a 7 that is yellow, a 4 that is blue, and a 2 that is green. And it keeps you talking, it keeps the flow of the game, and that person will say, done, made my choice, then you will roll for the next active player. Again, make yourself a list across the dry erase, just so that you don't skip anybody as you go along. And that's Quicks. Hey. So what'd you think of that? Do you think that's a game that you would play remotely with your friends, family, anybody? If there's a game out there that you think would be perfect for remote, in either case, leave some comments down below. Let me know what you thought of the series. And also if there's a game that I should check out that can be done remotely. And then click subscribe. Because I'll be doing a lot more of these videos showing games that can be done remotely. And if you're looking to find me, have a conversation, ask some questions, I'll leave all my social medias down below in the description box. As well as my Twitch stream and a couple other links to some streamers that do board games online so that you can come and play with us and so if you've enjoyed this please give it a thumbs up let me know what you think let me know what you want to learn about and don't forget that board gaming is not a spectator sport so grab those dice and play and until next time go out there and play some games